joining us. So here at DNA Star, our software, um, as you know, we, we focus in, in a few different areas, molecular biology, genomics, and, and more recently, structural biology. Really, our focus is design software to allow researchers to efficiently run cloning experiments, uh, assemble sequencing data from Sanger uh, machines, identify any variants uh, in the sequencing data that you uh, generate, also to allow the alignment of multiple sequences, both at the gene and genome level, and then to visualize that data in a genome viewer, uh, along with provided access to databases. Um, more recently, our applications have expanded to go from uh, the nucleic acid to amino acid and onto protein structure, and then eventually onto protein-protein uh, interactions. And so, in summary, the applications are seamless, they're very powerful, and we're really enabling the life scientists to do more uh, work in less time through the use of our software. So in summary, it's, it's really we're designing software to make your life easier. DNA Star, part of the principles uh, and the foundations of our software design, we're very much focused on accuracy. As you uh, may or may not know, in our genomics applications, we are top rated in terms of uh, the assembly and the variant detection in NGS data. And this is really a top priority for all of our applications, including our protein applications that Steve will be presenting and doing a live demo for. We're also focused on efficiency. We understand that researchers' time is very val valuable. and We don't want to produce software with a high learning curve. Um, so we want to make sure that we make things that are easy to use, that generate the right answer the first time so you don't waste any time, uh, you know, during your research and your, your days. Resources. We understand that there are certain limitations uh, when, during, when doing research, um, and so we design our software to make use of um, resources that may, you may not have access to, like the cloud resources. We also design our algorithms uh, if you're going to run very uh, long and strenuous calculations to be accessed locally and tapping into resources such as hard drives, which are, um, in essence, very cheap uh, resource in the lab. So you're not occupying uh, the very expensive hardware, say, in a desktop computer like memory. So today's talk, we're going to be focused on our structural biology suite and recent expansions. Um, several years ago, Steve and his team started working on a molecular viewer uh, for the analysis of three-dimensional protein structures. And over the last couple of years, through the acquisition of a couple of key pieces of technology, as well as through in-house development, we've been working on applications to feed this viewer. And so that's what the focus of today's talk is going to be. And we call these applications that feed the viewer our NOVA applications. Um, we have generated three of them to date. The first one that we'll be presenting is NOVA Fold, which is a protein structure prediction application that is uh, based on the ITASER algorithm from the University of Michigan. We have NovaFold Antibody, which is a specific application for uh, antibody modeling that was developed in-house by Steve and his team. And then NovaDoc, which is a protein-protein uh, app uh, docking application whose foundation is based on the swarm dock algorithm out of the Francis Crick Institute. So we've we, generating uh, these new applications, we provided access to um, you know, through local Linux workstations. But more recently, and what we're unveiling today, is that all of these Nova appli applications can now be accessed on the cloud, either through uh, in-app access or today's talk and in, in the title, our web apps, our Nova Cloud web apps, that you can access through our website through a secured login. 
speaking of security, something that's very important for researchers today, um, our cloud applications, our Nova cloud applications, are hosted by the Amazon uh, AWS. And as you can see in this diagram, kind of the flow of information. So we allow users to log in locally, either through the in, through our application itself or through a website URL. Um, information about the sequence that you're interested in is sent to um, a cloud service uh, portal funneled straight to the Amazon Web Services, where the algorithms of Novafold, Novafold Antibody, and Novadoc reside. The computation is run on the AWS uh, cloud computing resources. The uh, answer is then generated, stored up in a secure space on AWS, and then at the user's discretion, you can download the resulting files to view in our molecular viewer. The results, um, part of our focus on efficiency is the output file. And for each application, we generate an output file that's very user-friendly and helps the researchers get a head start on their analysis. We provide information such as what templates were used during the modeling process, um, any access to uh, sequence alignments of the templates that were used, also one-click access to structural alignments if you have uh, an interest in aligning your protein model to any uh, related protein or any template that was used. An extension onto the NovaFold output is throughout the process, which is automated, uh, based on fold recognition, there are predictions made about the potential function of the protein, and that information is delivered also into the report, along with easy link access to the Amigo website based on gene ontology. Also, um, Throughout this process, if there are predicted ligand binding sites or any enzymatic activity, we identify and even model in potential ligands, as well as identify residues that are thought to be part of the active site. As far as NovaFold antibody goes, in terms of this output, um, we certainly generate uh, models of the antibodies as well as um, automatically annotate the CDR regions of both the heavy and light chains to give people easy access to the key determining regions of antibody specificity, along with providing details about the templates that were used through this homology modeling application. And then in NovaDoc, one of the nice uh, outputs of this uh, docking, uh, pro docking uh, process, in this report, we're actually giving uh, users a, a, a nice view of the potential docking poses of the ligand. Uh, in the top left, you'll see uh, the receptor that's colored in green as, and, and surrounding it, and there's a blow up of this image on the right. You have potential docking poses of the ligand that rep, rep, are represented by the spherical uh, center of mass representations. And like a stop and go light, green being good, red being bad, easily uh, directed towards what we consider to be good models and what we consider to be not so good models based on energy calculations and cluster sizes. We also uh, provide easy access to um, the protein-protein interface that has been predicted. Uh, we highlight um, not only in the model but also in the tab format uh, the predicted interactions between the receptor and ligand. So we have, so you can then direct if you're doing mutagenesis um, or any other um, studies to either stabilize or disrupt the interface, a uh, really simple, easy to use uh, guide in terms of um, where you want to start interrogating the interface. To that, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Steve Darnell. Um, he is going to uh, do a live demonstration of all of our NOVA applications, um, give you a preview of what uh, is on our website and how to access the NOVA applications, and then how to run through uh, the viewing of the results in our Protein 3D Molecular Viewer. Steve? Thank you, Tom. 
how about we get started here and we'll actually go to our website real quickly. Uh, when you come to the DNA Star website, you can, uh, you'll can you enter our, our home page here and there are a couple of places in order to access the Nova Cloud system, but the easiest way is under the software menu item and the Nova Cloud item. That leads you to this workflow selector to each one of the three different Nova applications. Uh, Nova Fold is for predicting 3D structures of proteins from a sequence, a uh, single sequence. It's, uh, it is really for single proteins. It's not for trying to model complexes uh, together. Nova Fold is best when it's a, uh, a single globular domain. However, depending on the templates uh, located in our non-redundant copy of the protein data bank, you can certainly uh, be able to model multi-domain proteins as long as there are uh, statistically significant templates to help guide that process. Nova Fold antibody uh, is for, again, 3D structure prediction of antibody um, molecules. Uh, these are actual complexes between light and heavy chains. Uh, you can uh, provide uh, one or two sequences to model one, uh, the heavy or the light chain, or both of them in complex. We support um, variable fragments, fab fragments, uh, full H chains, uh, and, uh, and, well, that's what we support. <laughs> single domain. <laughs> and, uh, and, and actually, uh, for single domain, uh, single. If you wanted to do something like a single chain variable fragment, uh, we'd actually be recommending you use the Nova Fold application rather than Nova Fold antibody at the, at the current time. But we're bringing uh, support to uh, single chain variable fragments in the uh, in the coming uh, uh, months. And Nova Doc is for uh, performing protein protein docking using a flexible protein docking algorithm. Uh, this you have to provide two starting structures, uh, one for the ligand, one for the receptor. Either one can, uh, can have multiple chains already placed together, like you can do an antibody docking to an antigen. Um, and the, the difference there with Novadoc is that we are expecting structures. However, if you don't have an experimental structure that you want to work with for your docking simulations, you can use NovaFold in order to help predict structures for things that are uh, that do not have structures. And that's how you can kind of get into making uh, you know predictions of actual binding interactions between uh, two uh, protein partners and start to try to make predictions of interface residents. Uh, I'll just I won't go through every single one, but I want to at least show the front door to all of the applications. Once you have a, um, uh, if you have a license already to one of our three applications, you will uh, see uh, one of these submit pages. If you don't, uh, you'll be greeted to a uh, to an, um, a page to create an account and then to uh, purchase additional um, predictions. Uh, if, if you have run out or still haven't had any, academic users will get a free demonstration for each one of the Nova applications. So your first run will be complimentary. Uh, like I was saying with Nova Fold, you just place, uh, you enter a single um, amino acid sequence, or you can provide a file in FASTA format. Uh, uh, with the antibodies, you get the selection of, uh, or you, you can provide either heavy or light, so you can provide two sequences right here in this panel. And with uh, docking, you will be asked for uh, receptor or receptor and ligand PDB files. So, so let's uh, show one of these in action. We'll start with Nova, or we'll do Nova doc. So the uh, the input here, as I said before, are two PDB files. In this case. Uh, what we're going to do is a, uh, a docking prediction of a FAB molecule against uh, a neuraminidase. So I've already set up the, the receptor and the ligand molecules in, in PDB format. So here we will set, uh, actually we'll use the, uh, the FAB itself, this light and heavy chain structure as our receptor, and we'll choose the neuraminidase as our ligand. All you have to do is just give it a name of your choice. Oops. <laughs> uh, 
And you'll have the option for all three applications to set some level of uh, advanced options in doc uh, with our docking application. I mentioned we have it, it is a flexible protein docking algorithm where we actually sample concerted motions of your protein fold along normal modes of motion. So you get to set uh, whether or not you want fewer or more normal modes of motion to be considered in the uh, in the docking simulation. If you wanted a full rigid body docking experience, you can set that to zero. If you wanted to have a, um, a more flexibility being considered, you can increase that number. The thing that's interesting and most notable about Nova Dock is that you do not have to have either the receptor or the ligand in that perfect docking pose to begin with. There is a little bit of give allowed with our flexible approach because we will sample and explore conformational space around uh, those uh, initial poses along these normal modes. So uh, there is a increased chance that we're going to actually find a slightly induced conformation that may be um, formed when the two interact with one another. And additionally, you have the option to propose uh, where the binding interfaces are in either the receptor or the ligand. So if you were doing an antibody, you could choose to put all the CDR residues, uh, your complementary determining region residues, uh, to help uh, focus the simulation. So you, instead of being fully blind, where we'd be sampling the entire surface, you can focus on uh, just a region. So we'll actually do this in this blind docking mode, and this is all it takes. Two PDB files, hit submit. You'll see a confirmation in a moment, and our jobs are off and running. So uh, this, all of your cloud resources are being automatically provisioned by the DNA Star Cloud Web Service. You don't have to worry about managing computers. We take care of everything. The results will be displayed and the statuses of your job will be displayed here. And when things are done, you will actually see little notifications along this for our different applications. And you can see here, I just have a mixture already. All of, of the three application results together, everything is going to come to this one uh, status page. So let's take a look at some of the results that you can get from our applications. So our first one is uh, an aldolase structure that was predicted with Novafol from the microorganism B. microti. So what's uh, this particular example was selected uh, for uh, use of one of our uh, one of our users because uh, there were no structures predicted for this or, or for this entire organism. So we are interested in seeing what we could do for for B microti proteins. Aldolase uh, here. Uh, after the after the, the uh, after the runs here, what we're actually seeing are some of the regions or uh, parts of the report that Tom had already told you to expect. Uh, we have a number of templates that were selected for this modeling process. All of the PDB IDs listed here. We also provide some quick uh, descriptions about coverage and sequence identity. In addition, we actually show a little mini map of the uh, of the aligned regions too. The templates are color coded here based upon sequence identity. So green um, alignments here would indicate uh, a high degree of uh, sequence identity. The orange ones here at that moderate level, you'd see red, even black uh, if things were um, very dissimilar very to one another. <laughs> uh, the model overview here is a quick table to show all of the results uh, that are being delivered to you as your results. Again, they are color coded to try to help identify identify which ones we believe are the most uh, confident models. Here, with this organism, or with this particular run, uh, model one was our best. Uh, we provide two predicted uh, structural similarity scores, a predicted TM score, a template modeling score, which uh, ranges from zero to one, where one is a perfect match and um, a score above a 0.5 is predicted to be, you've got, we've uh, predicted the correct protein fold. Uh, an RMSD is that kind of prediction of the standard RMSD value that uh, where it's the average uh, the average distance of all the paired um, atoms between two structures. So RMSD's lower scores are better. TM scores closer to one is better. Additionally, we show um, uh, a clustering of many decoy or excuse me, of, of many confirmations that were generated during the process. We 
also, when you uh, activate a um, predicting um, the function and binding site uh, option uh, with NovaFold, we'll provide you this additional information. We'll show you structures that are um, ex similar, experimental structures that are similar to uh, our model that we've predicted, and we'll use that information as a starting point to predict ligand binding sites uh, within these molecules. And that's what we're showing here. Um, we actually, uh, this view, or uh, this table here will actually control the uh, uh, displays of molecules. We'll actually see site uh, binding site residues listed here. And then we can also, we predict uh, enzymatic function as well as uh, gene ontology terms as well. You also have the option to um, ex uh, expand basically one of those models into a, our full molecular viewer. So you can do, um, rather than just seeing the uh, the summaries and the little interactive thumbnails that we have in the report view, you can actually go into a full explorative mode where you can perform sequence bioinformatics on the, um, on this structure. You can look at uh, interactions between all of the views, including uh, uh, selections in one view are going to be presented in all the other views. So you can start to interact or, or uh, explore your structure based upon uh, things like antigenicity profiles or, or uh, predicted flexibility and uh, metrics along that. All of those feature or methods here are controlled by this methods panel. And if you find regions that you are interested in, you actually create um, features to be able to come back to them later on. NovaFold antibody results uh, are actually uh, look look like this to begin with. We again, uh, NovaFold is for predicting individual protein molecules, where NovaFold is or NovaFold antibody will predict an antibody complex. One of the things that we do for you is that we automatically annotate the complementary determining region loop. So they're listed under this hypervariable uh, feature type, and you can interact with and select and visualize all of those very quickly, and since most people are often interested in what the H3 loop looks like, you can even select and quickly change the uh, the rendering of this, so if you want to see the side chains. Here we go. There are our CDR H3 side chains right there, and we can also zoom in on them, actually, for to make this a little easier, we can actually recenter the view on that zoom in on that uh, part of the molecule, and we can start to interrogate that region in more detail. So Nova Doc is the final application. Uh, again, you can use this for any two binding partners. Uh, this here is actually uh, just a continuation of the workflow that we were just showing from the antibodies. We're, it's, this is the same antibody structure that's been docked against this neuraminidase. Again, uh, this view is interactive, and these little bubbles that are uh, around the antibody structure are where um, many of the poses were centered for the different uh, neuraminidase uh, uh, predictions. And again, this kind of larger green sphere indicates a low energy and a larger cluster size as well. Lower in the in the report, we provide more, uh, the same summary information, but in addition, we also will uh, highlight the interface residues in this uh, interactive thumbnail, and we'll also list the interface residue, residues within this protein interface between binding partners one and two, the ligand and receptor, as well as all of the individual contacts it is making with the other binding partner. Again, you can take and open these results into um, structure or into structure documents as well for um, more interrogation. And actually, in this case, what we've done is we've opened model one with uh, and superimposed it with the crystallographic known crystallographic structure of of this complex. Now. This was performed with a blind docking uh, mentality. We did not sample, oversample the CDR regions, which would be uh, the place where the antibodies are, are mostly interact with their antigens. 
The colored backbones are uh, of this this model are our model prediction, and the gray overlay is the actual experimental structure. As Tom was saying, accuracy is one of the things that we are very uh, that that, uh, that that we're very protective of uh, with our software. And this is an example here where we have an extremely strong uh, uh, well answer being correctly identified. Uh, when you look at the RMSDs of these predictions here, we're, we're in that one and a half to or less, or less yeah. range. So th this is an example here where you know the app, where where we've had a very very good prediction and this kind of energy funnel that is formed around this this uh part of the protein was re uh, really deep and significant so that our algorithm was able to identify uh, multiple poses in this region. Excellent. Uh, real quick before we, we we finish up here, Steve, could you go back to the website and, and just show the attendees how to download the file? Oh, so once you've done yeah. the prediction, yep. Um, with with that, uh, our jobs are still running right now. For the, uh, one that I started early this morning and one that we just did. When they are done, you'll actually see some visual cues here. That there's a little check mark showing that the job is done. Uh, a little bit of quick information about the uh, summary statistics of our best models, and then to uh, get these particular files, all you have to do is click the download link. That will download from uh, from within your web browser, and then you'll be able to open it in Protein 3D. Excellent. So let's go back to our talk. Well, thank you very much, Steve. That was uh, very helpful getting introduced to the to the new Nova Cloud apps and being able to to run everything through the cloud and then to visualize in the in the 3D viewer. It's certainly an easy to use viewer yet very powerful. Um, and that's really what we're building here is the experience for the end user and for researchers. Uh, generating software that's easy to use that are integrated across typical biochemical workflows. We don't require you know very expensive hardware, uh, very modest computers can run very large calculations through our software. And, and of course, on the, on the customer service side, we're very much focused and proud of our premium technical support, either by phone or email, webinars, chat, videos that we have on our website, and even more. And really, it comes down to the people at DNA Star and our commitment to communication, not only within, but also to researchers outside. The focus on the development of our software and making sure that we're feeding into the, the requirements of today's researchers. And, and part of that is not only bringing in technology that, that are developed uh, outside of DNA Star, but also being innovative within DNA Star. And this is just giving you a quick snapshot of, of a lot of the people that have helped build um, our software and been part of the customer experience for many years. That's the structure team up there in the upper left if you want to know the people who are making <laughs> this stuff for you. That's right. That's right. Um, but to that, I want to thank everyone uh, for attending. If you have any questions that um, I think Sharon has a couple right now that she wants to ask, but if uh, we don't get to all of them today, or if you want access to a trial version of the software, or even to talk about the software, feel free to reach out to either Steve or myself directly. Our emails are listed below. Hi, thank you, both of you, for this wonderful presentation about our new NovaCloud capabilities. Um, we have two questions that came from our attendees. The first one is, are you able to mutagenize proteins that have already been docked and then run a quick minimization to see if the mutations stabilize or destabilize the complex. Steve? Yep. Um, currently, uh, the way that you would uh, do that with our software would be to um, actually perform independent structure predictions with, uh, with different mutated sequences and then perform independent docking simulations and then compare the difference between the two of them. So to answer that question, we don't directly do design mutations within a preformed complex already. That being said, that is precisely the direction where we're moving toward for the rest of this year. Our team is working with, uh, or working right now toward um, bringing uh, site-directed mutation into the protein 
3D viewer for kind of point and click changes in the fall and more automated workflows to continue after that. Yeah. That's really exciting news. I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. Um, the next question that we have is, does the local version of each Nova app run faster on the cloud or locally on a Linux computer? So, uh, I would it kind of depends a little bit, and that really has to be, uh, I mean that by what sort of computing power are you putting behind it? Uh, the Nova Cloud applications run on machines with eight virtual cores and with about eight to 12 gigabytes of RAM. So it's a relatively modest workstation. Uh, if you have a similar computer, NovaDoc will take approximately 12 hours. Uh, NovaFold Antibody will take five to 10 minutes. And NovaFold will take, depending on the length, somewhere between two to four to maybe up to a day of time. Uh, and by that is uh, short things under 100 in that two to four hour range, 400 and above, you're getting into more of a day. Uh, there's a little bit of spin up time for the computer, so there's an extra 10 minutes on the cloud. Uh, Nova, Nova Fold actually also takes advantage of uh, distributed computing as well. So uh, we will often uh, be able to shrink that time by about a factor of two or three by being able to bring two, three, or four computers uh, to individual predictions too. So you can gain some efficiencies locally. You, de you definitely can. Um, some of the advantages of our local products too is that they're um, they are designed to be Linux uh, workstation programs, and they are command line driven currently. That certainly makes them um, very uh, capable of being integrated into your own workflows too. If you're looking to provide a structured prediction uh, as part of uh, your your needs for different types of analyses, like if you're interested in uh, trying to again predict binding sites, uh, you could bring structures together through these uh, the Nova applications and directly into a scripted Nova doc pipeline. Uh, or uh, in terms of other ways you could use the software too, uh, structure predictions are often the beginning of the process, not necessarily the end of, of what we're trying to do. So you can use a structure to help guide variations that you want to make, point mutations. and Perhaps you want to focus on the surface of molecules and avoid the core of, of or predicted internal uh, core of a protein too. Uh, additionally, you can use these to help guide your humanization and epitope prediction um, activities when you're using antibodies and yeah. uh, and, uh, and and antigen recognition as well. Absolutely, absolutely. 